Well, it looks like I'm doing a video with one of these, but I need some more appropriate lighting. Alexa, turn on Victron in the van. Okay. Mood lighting set. Well, welcome back to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures, and this episode is sponsored by 12 Up Planet, and they were kind enough to send me two white boxes, which has a blue box inside. But let's change the lighting back to a normal colour and let's show you what they sent me. So, two white boxes. So they sent me a Serbo GX and the Touch 70 screen. And I think, without a doubt, the Serbo GX is one of the smartest bits of Victron equipment they make and one of the most useful. And you're going to say, well, how can I say that when clearly I've not even installed it? Let me explain what this does. Well, in many ways, I've always be, already been using one for about a year. So what this does is this runs the VRM, which is the, what does the VRM stand for? I forget. I completely forgot because I only use the acronym. It's Victron Remote Monitoring, obviously. So let me show you what the VRM is. Everyone is, uh, who has Victron equipment is probably used or familiar with the Victron Connect app. I'm going to show you it on my iPad, um, but it looks the same on, you, on your phone. It's just in portrait mode. So normally you get into the app, you've got your list of your Bluetooth Victron devices. You click on it, it connects to the app, and then you can get your information and you can change your, your settings. Or same for your solar, you connect to the individual item and get all your information. However, it's a very disjointed system in a way. You connect to your individual piece. But there's, and that's only local as well. You can only connect to it if you're in the vicinity of the unit or you're within Bluetooth range. There's a second tab, which is the VRM. And that is going to be your remote stuff. So you can log in online on the web portal or you can use a standalone app. So this is the Victron VRM. So you've got information from all of your units together. You've got your BMV or your shunt showing your battery percentage. You've got your MPPT solar controller showing you what solar power is currently coming in. If you've got a Victron inverter or a multi plush, you can say, see what AC loads you currently have going on. And if you're hooked up to the grid uh, or you're on a hookup on a campsite, you can also see what AC loads are coming in. Um, you can sort of see where the energy flows and also shows you how much DC energy is currently being going out. So that's the one, you've got all that information in one screen, but you can do far more than that. Uh, I've got all the history of my van for the last year, so I can see on average how much I took from the grid, how much I produced from solar, how much my total consumption was, my average state of charge over the last year, my average consumption, my average solar over the last year, you have all that historic data. So I've also added temperature tags as well. So on one of my Finland Arctic videos from last year, I bought a bunch of these and installed them in the van. So I've got all the information about the temperatures in the habitation outside the van, in the cab, in the shower room. And also you can add a GPS as well. So you can track your vehicle and its location. But not only more than that, as you can also go into your advanced area where you can have your own widgets and you can be look at all of the statistics from your state of charge recorded for as long as you've had your unit running. And you can also download your GPS tracks such as here and I can see everywhere I've ever driven with the van. And you can do that from anywhere in the world as long as your vehicle has internet connection. So if I've only just got the servo now, how have I been running the VRM for the last year? So the VRM is based off a operating system called Venus OS. And the Venus OS can, comes on this, but also there is an option to do it yourself on the Raspberry Pi, which is basically a little prototyping computer. And it's been great running on the Raspberry Pi. It's a lot of a cheaper solution than the Serbo GX, but I will talk about the differences and why I want to go for the upgrade. The way I see with using the Raspberry Pi is more or less you only have the software side of it. Yes, you can plug in USBs to plug in a USB GPS uh, and plug in the units themselves, such as the MPPT or the, or the Victron shunts, but you don't have options such as the built-in relays, the digital inputs, the tank sensors, the temperature controllers, and a, lot, um, and a lot more of the options as well. You can, with some difficulty, add those features to here with a top hat board on the Raspberry Pi, but it's not as simple. You can also remove one of the files from the operating system on here and use a third-party screen however with the servo it is very plug and play you can just have a HDMI plug-in as well so whilst this is great and it was great on a budget um, I 
felt that I could get more out of the unit if I was starting to use a Serbo GX. So that's why I'm going for the Serbo GX. So let's actually look at the hardware and what you get with the unit then. Whilst the majority of the Victron equipment, be the BMV, the MPPT, they have Bluetooth, they don't connect to the Serbo via Bluetooth. Uh, most of the units don't. Uh, there are a variety of different ways you can connect to your equipment. So V Bus, for example, is what the Multi Plus uses to connect to different bits of equipment. Uh, v Direct is things like the MPPT and the Victron Shunts uh, can use. However, you can also use VE Direct cables to USB, which is what I do with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so most of the bit, different bits of equipment will attach to the Serbo in one way or another. What I think is good about the Serbo is unlike the Raspberry Pi running the Venus OS, you don't have a lot of these other physical ports. So relays which you can control, and I'm going to talk about those in another video. Um, particularly, I'm going to do automatic um, solar dump load. So whenever my batteries are full from the solar, one of the relays will automatically turn on and heat my water tank on excess solar for free. And people in a camper van or boat environment, they can have different types of tank sensors, uh, wired in temperature sensors and other digital inputs as well. And the other important one for me is the Victron VRM can also be displayed uh, on a slightly different UI, but on a physical display mounted in the vehicle. So you can always see what's going on. So next up is the job of installing this and installing this in the van, which um, isn't really necessary to show you because I'm just mounting it to the walls and it's, it, if I'm honest, it's going to take ages. So I'm going to have the Touch 70 screen mounted up here with the cable running behind the wall. I think because of cable length, I'm going to put the servo in my little house electrical cupboard um, with some jiggery pokery to move all of this around. And then the Victron equipment itself lives in the electrical cupboard down here. Uh, however, the current Raspberry Pi, which I have the VRM running on, is mounted in the bottom of the cupboard down there. So all of these are already wired up to it. So I should just be able to extend or unravel the, the cables and bring them all the way up until that cupboard over there. And just to show you what else you get in the box. So you get your Touch 70 screen. There is also a Touch 50, uh, which is the five inches of the seven inch screen. And it is HDMI and USB powered. And then in the box, a nice bit of padding and just some mounting hardware. Uh, so I'm going to mount this black frame to the wall and then that will clip into it and then the wire will be recessed. And it comes with those interference things for cables. Also extremely nice of them, it comes with a uh, little template for mounting. I would say, missed opportunity, uh, the template or the jig just isn't actually to, to the correct scale. It might be for the Touch 50 frame, but um, it would have fit on the bit of paper. You could have just lined it up and drilled holes. Um, that being said, I'm just going to put it on the wall and then drill the holes using this as a template, if I'm honest with you. What's in the servo box? You get the servo, the padding, and you get your box of knickknacks. Uh, connectors for the different tank sensors and relays, and then your power wire as well. Right, hold on there. My thoughts are I want it out of the way. Um, I want about my eye level so I can easily see it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take off this whole panel, I think, to run the cable. It's a bit annoying, but we'll see how we get on. So this is the current state of it. That's the Touch 70 there running through the hole it needs to go to, which is now on attached a bit of wire as a wire puller. So then pull it up and around to come out the back of that cupboard. Hopefully this goes well. Right, well, I managed to put it through. That was incredibly easy, obviously. Right, we managed to get the HDMI and the USB into the cupboard. And I think I want to take that out, move that slightly, and then I can sort of position that in there and still use all the ports. Um, so let's ruin all my lovely wiring. It's only taken all afternoon, but it's finally mounted in and the whole cupboard's rearranged. So let me just run all the wires, then start, let's get start, start getting it powered up. So I've got four different USB items which need to connect to the Servo GX, but the Servo GX only has three USB ports. So I've got a small USB hub, that works, no issue. One of these is a USB GPS, which gives the GPS to the Servo GX. 
two of these are a USB cable to VE Direct, and that is for my solar MPPT and for my Victron BMV712 battery monitor. And then the other is the Mark III USB to VE bus dongle, and that's for the MultiPlus. Now, you could connect the MultiPlus directly via the VE bus ports, so I've just elected to carry on using the USB dongle I've already got, opposed to plugging it in separately. So that's gonna be the USB hub, which is going to have all my veteran equipment connected to the servo with. That took a lot longer than I wanted, but I'm quite happy with how it's all mounted, it's in the cupboard, so let's plug it in. Ooh. We've got something going on over there. Well, that's the VRM screen up. That's my battery. That's my solar. There's a servo GX. Right, I'm going to type in my, it'll be 000, zero, zero then I'm going to change it to whatever. Right, so I should be able to go to the online portal. So this is a bit of a uh, post narration over what I'm doing in a minute. Not showing much of the footage um, here just because I'm trying to migrate all of my information from my VRM on the Raspberry Pi over to the Serbo GX. So if it's a new installation, you just make your Victron VRM account. Uh, connect the Serbo GX to the internet. I've gone for the wired Ethernet cable, uh, but you can go for Wi-Fi as well. And then after you've done that, sign into it and you're pretty much sorted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to migrate all of my information from my Raspberry Pi over and that requires a few different numbers and codes that I have to kind of put across which I don't want to be in the video because they're unique to my devices. Um, but more or less, the, there's a whole screen about adding a new device and transferring all your old data from your old one over to your new one. So I've still got all my historic data. It's got to get done. Nice. So on the, the screen, you've got your normal view, shows your battery, shows your solar coming in. And if you've got multiple solar controllers, that will all be them grouped into one. Um, you turn on DC power in settings because some systems won't have a DC option. It would just be solar to batteries to invert it out. Um, but I have a big DC system, so that's where the DC powers come on. And that's where I'll see DC charging, such as the Orions, showing up in that area. Uh, input wise, you can go into settings for the input and change it to shore power. So when it when you're plugged in on a campsite, it's a shore power opposed to grid. There are other screens you can access as well. And then easy on to your menu settings, you can access all your individual units to change a lot of their details. Just to point out on here, whilst you can access your units like your solar controller, you can't change uh, the device's charge settings and how it works with your batteries. That's why you do still need the Victron Connect app um, to connect to the units if you want to change um, the actual device. This is more reading information from your devices. So the screen does also have a auto dimming feature and as an auto off as well. So I've set it to one minute, but you can have it on permanently or you could have it on for half an hour, 10 minutes and so on. And in the settings for this unit, there is so much you can do, far more than just what you may want to use in the van. Um, all your normal things from firmware dates, remote control, setting up system, your languages, the portal online, and many other bits which are more set up for domestic systems, uh, and the way it's connected to the internet, if it's by ethernet cable, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the GPS, generator start and stop, so you could have a system where it automatically turns on the generator, tank pumps, relays, services, and all the other I.O. from the tank sensors and temperature sensors, digital inputs, the Bluetooth sensors, and more. And that is pretty much gonna wrap up this video. So, Servo GX installed, Touch 70 installed, very happy, just demonstrated the VRM, or the power of the VRM. And I've only really shown it in a very simple format in, in my camper van context. Um, it is hugely powerful for other applications. Um, how you can use the VRM to monitor your statistics in a whole ecosystem, opposed to just the Victron Connect app, uh, looking at individual pages. You can do it all at once, be that remotely, be that in the vehicle itself. Um, I've been very happy for the year, last year and a half running on the Raspberry Pi, which I think is great if you just want the software. Or if you're a bit more advanced and have a bit more DOI and tech skills and you want to go for the hardware, you can expand the Raspberry Pi. 
But if you want a unit which just works straight out of the box, it's plug and play, then the Serbo GX and the Touch 70 screen or the Touch 50 is a great option. Next time, I'm going to do a bit more of an advanced video looking at the relays. So I'm going to use that to make a solar dump load so I automatically get hot water when the batteries are full. I'm also going to potentially look at the tank sender units and also look at the physical temperatures. So we'll have a few other features. I'm also going to install on the next video some GUI mods so I can customise the interface here and have things like my temperature displaying. Big thank you to 12 Volt Planet for sending me the Serbo GX and the Touch 70. And if you are interested in one of those yourself, um, just look in the description below and you'll find links to the Serbo, the Touch 70 and the Touch 50 as well. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.